Hi there, and welcome back to my channel. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about cold brew coffee. Now, cold brew and iced coffee often get confused, so I want to try and clear up a bit of confusion before we delve into making it. Iced coffee is coffee brewed warm and chilled with ice, whereas cold brew is coffee that's made with cold water, simply. And because it's made with cold water, it takes quite a bit of time to infuse. Normally, like a cafetiere would be like an immersion method. So you'd be looking at like 10 minutes tops, whereas cold brew can be like usually between 12 and 48 hours for full infusion. The advantages are that it creates a sweeter coffee. It's not quite as bitter as like normal extracted coffee. And it's a different drink. It's lighter usually. And it just it tastes different. If you've never tried it, I would definitely, definitely recommend trying it because it's it's a nice summer drink and it's just different to coffee. It's hard to explain. There's, there's also quite a bit more caffeine in it, so if you need a quick caffeine hit, then that's one of the best ways to do it. So the traditional way and the easiest way to make cold brew is to grind some coffee, put it in a jar with cold water, and leave it in the fridge overnight or for a couple of days, just depending on how you like your coffee. And it's a bit of trial and error. I've found that I like mine to go for about 18 hours, and then you filter it out and you're left with cold brew. So basically, I ground some coffee last night and mixed it with cold water and put it in the fridge. I'm gonna be repeating it a couple of times, so I figured there was no point in showing how to do this a few times. There are two other methods, however, the first one is using one of these. This is an ISI whipping siphon or a cream whipper. And basically what it does is it uses nitrous oxide capsules and it's generally designed for whipping cream, but you can do it with rapid infusions. So this took 18 hours to make cold brew and this takes two. Apparently I've never tried it. And the final method is using sous vide. So Technically, it's not a cold brew. I would say it's a kind of mid brew because you're basically you're using a water bath and taking it up to 60 degrees Celsius. So you're not going to get all the flavour profile of using water nearly boiling at 93 Celsius, like what traditional coffee would be made with. But you're not going to get the cold, like two, three degree Celsius water that cold brew is made with. This method is supposed to take two hours as well. So it'll be an interesting comparison between the three using traditional cold brew as a base. So to begin with, I'm going to be using the Chef Steps recipe for the ISI because I've never done that before. And I'm going to be using my traditional cold brew recipe with the sous vide just to see if it gives the same result sped up. I'm going to start with the sous vide coffee because the grinder's already set for how I would make traditional cold brew and I want to see if I can replicate those results with sous vide. So my grinder's set to 21. It's the Sage Smart Grinder Pro. And this is, it, it's close to the espresso range. Quite like a fine grind with this, I just feel it gets it on the money. And grind time, I've got 19.6 seconds. So I'm aiming for 32 grams. I'll play with that. It's still not quite dialed in for the full 32 grams, but it's, I think that's about 30 I'm getting. So it's not far away. I can always start it and pause it to get my, my 32 grams. So I'm just gonna do that now. So the first thing, I'm just going to put the ground container on the scale, tear it out, and then grind. So I ended up grinding for about 23 seconds, and I've got 32 and a half grams of coffee, which is just about perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in a bag, and then fill the bag with 400 milliliters of cold water. So a good tip when filling up sous vide bags is to roll over the top to stop anything breaking the seal. And also just put it in a big jug and it keeps it standing, keeps it hands free, it saves you having to juggle. So I'm just going to pop in my coffee. And I'm going to top that up with cold water. So this is the same ratio that I used in the, the jar and left overnight. So I'm hoping to get the same or very similar results, albeit in a shorter time. So this is the advantage of having a chamber sealer. What I was talking about is you can seal a bag of water in the last video. 
and this is one of the rare instances where you would actually want to seal a bag of water. Don't do this in a clamp style vacuum machine because it will just suck all the water through. You'd really need a chamber vacuum to do this. You could use the, the water displacement method where you just drop the bag into the water and it pushes up the side. That would be perfectly fine. You could suck out some of the air with a straw, but I've got a chamber, so I may as well use it. So I've got this set to 60 seconds with a seal time of six seconds. And that should get all the air out and give it a nice bag to throw in the sous vide. So that's just going to seal and then the air is going to be let back into the chamber, just like so. So we're opening up the chamber. I've now got a bag with coffee and water and it's all sealed, there's no air in here. I'm just going to slosh this around just to make sure all the coffee grounds have been picked up by the water and just to make sure everything's mixed. Then I'm just going to lean it in the counter and press in the edge and this just forces most of the grounds back down. So you can see I've basically got dirty water here. So I'm going to throw that in a water bath, it's 60 degrees celsius in there and I'm going to put it in there for two hours before I take it out and filter it. So the sous vide coffee is ready to go. I've set the timer on dual for two hours, so that will alert me when it's finished. I'm going to move on to the creaming whipping method. So as I said before, this is the chef steps method and this produces a concentrate for cold brew. You can drink cold brew straight or you can dilute it, you can create concentrates. The method that I use for my normal one, I usually just drink one to one, but with the chef steps one, it's quite a high ratio. So I'm going to grind 100 grams of coffee and put 500 grams of water into a one liter ISI siphon. This is quite a big ratio. So this I'm expecting this to be pretty strong. They recommend using a drip setting. So I'm going to go up the grinder and I'm going to go to 50, which is basically smack bang in the middle of the filter, which would be a drip. And I'm going to set that to about six cups worth and just see what I get with that. So again, I'm just going to take my grinds container out, stick it in the scales, tear it out, and then start grinding and see if I can get close to 100 grams. So I ended up running that twice at 22.8 seconds. So it would take 45.6 seconds in total to grind 100 grams at pretty coarse. One thing I would really recommend getting if you're looking at buying an ISI is budget to get the funnel. This is an ISI one. You could use a jam funnel, it's pretty much the same thing. But the funnel comes with a sieve set and it just all fits together nicely and it just makes things nice and easy. Obviously I'm not going to be using the sieve, but... So 100 grams of coffee is quite a lot of coffee. And I'm just going to pour that in. And give it a shake just to get the rest of it. Excellent. So I'm going to pop this on the scales, tear it, and put in 500 grams of cold water. I'm going to pop the lid on, and generally with a whipping siphon, you would shake it, but do not shake this because the grounds could get into the mechanism that releases the air and it could get stuck and you could end up basically with a problem in your hands. So I'm just going to turn it gently just to make sure everything's mixed. I don't need to go too crazy. I just popped a straight nozzle on the ISI just so that nothing leaks and I'm going to be charging this with three nitrous chargers. I use the ISI branded ones just because I've got an ISI whip and it seems the right thing to do. So pop it in pop it on the filter holder and turn until you feel resistance and then give it another turn until you hear the gas get into the chamber. And that's one. So I'm just going to repeat that twice and then pop this in the fridge for two hours. So while everything is chilling and cooking, this has been in the fridge for 18 hours anyway. So I can start the process to filter this and then pop it back in the fridge so that it's ready when the other two are. 
The coffee I've been using for all three of these is Columbia Oil Carmen Filter by Rave. As you know, I'm a massive fan of Rave coffee. This one is perfect for like cafeteers, V60s, aero presses, and it makes really, really good cold brew. Made it with, I can't remember what I made it with the last time, but this has been a lot better. It's been a lot nicer. And yeah, just really like it. It's a, it's a light medium roast and it's got notes of red fruit, vanilla and cocoa. And I would say it's quite a chocolatey coffee. You can taste the chocolate. Pretty fruity, depending on the application. I tend to find well, like a V60, you get the fruit more, whereas with cold brew, you get a kind of sweet cocoa taste. So to filter this, I'm simply just going to use a V60 with V60 paper. It's already wet, and I'm just going to filter it into like, the same jug. And then that way, I'm going to get slightly less because the coffee's going to absorb some. But I should be left with about 300 mils. I'm just going to pour that in. Get it everywhere. And it takes a bit longer to drip down than normal warm coffee, so this whole process will take about 20 minutes maybe. And then I'll be left with some good cold brew. So it's been about two hours since I put the sous vide coffee in. The traditional cold brew is filtered fine, it went through the V60. It took about three filters because of the clog, because the size of the coffee and it seems to be because it's colder, it seems to clog a bit more. So I'm hoping with the sous vide coffee, because it's slightly warmer, it should flow through a bit faster, hopefully, I'm not sure though. So I'm just going to remove this from the water bath and dry the bag. And it just looks like brown water. So what I'm going to do is turn it upside down and just cut a corner off the bag. That's all I need to pour it with a bit of control into the V60, hopefully. So it feels pretty warm. And yeah, it's flowing a bit faster. So hopefully that takes a bit shorter. The traditional cold brew took about an hour to filter through, so hopefully this is a bit faster. So that was a bit quicker. That only took about 10, 15 minutes and I gave it a squeeze. I did find a tip, however, and it was to pour it into a cafetiere first, plunge it in the cafetiere, and then pass it through the V60. It just made things so much quicker because it catches the majority of the, the larger particles that are gonna clog the V60. Obviously because this is warm, I've put it in an ice bath to try and cool it as quickly as I can so I can taste at the same time. And I'm just going to pop that to the side. And lastly, we're going to filter out the ISI. So, first thing is to discharge. And you put a cloth over the nozzle because you do this slowly, there might be some liquid comes out. So this is just to catch any liquid. So pull the trigger lightly and you'll hear the gas escaping. So once all the gas is left, the flipping siphon, it should stop making a noise and you'll be able to easily unscrew the lid. So I'll let it off. It smells extremely like coffee. It's very cold as well. Obviously it's been in the fridge, but I think the, the nitrous does makes it a bit colder. So I'm going to pour this into my cafeteria. And <laughs> it's fizzy. This isn't like carbonated, this is just like a result of the the infusion and these bubbles will subside very, very quickly. And then just pour it in as I can into the jar. So in front of me, I've got three pretty similar looking cold brews made three very different ways. So to begin with, I've got my traditional, my ISI and my sous vide. Now the yield, I'm quite surprised because the yield is very similar between the three of them. If anything, the one I'm most surprised about is the ISI produced the least coffee, but I'm only talking like about 5% less. And I suspect the reason for this, although there was more water, there was a lot more coffee. And it's worth noting, this is a concentrate, so this will definitely need diluted. 
whereas the other two I believe can just be drunk straight. So I'm going to try them all undiluted first. But funny feeling the ISI one's going to hurt, but we'll see. So I'm just going to measure 100 grams of each into a glass first. So I've got 100 grams of each and three glasses. The reason I measured this is because I want to dilute it with the ratios, possibly, and I want to know exactly how much is in. So first one is a traditional cold brew method. It smells like cold brew coffee. I'm, I, I know what this is going to taste like, so I'm using this as a control. And that just tastes exactly what I thought it was going to taste like. Pretty sweet, pretty acidic. The flavour of the chocolate coming through. Not really getting too much fruit flavour from it, but we'll compare it. We'll start with the sous vide one because I think the ISI one's going to be very strong. So the sous vide one, I popped this in the ice bath in the fridge so it's the same temperature as the other ones. And I'm not a huge fan. I'm getting just bitter notes. There's no... There's a bit of acidity, but it's it's mainly bitter. It's definitely not balanced. It's just it's very, very bitter. I suspect it, it might mellow when it's diluted, but we'll see. And finally, the ISI, which I know for a fact is going to be too strong, but yeah, we'll try. Yeah, that's that's extremely strong, but promising because the, there are flavours. There is quite high acidity within that, so that's good. It's not just bitter like the sous vide. So I'm going to dilute the ISI one at one to one. So I know I've had a mouthful, but it's 95, so I can top it up. Back up to 100. And I'll just add 100 millilitres or 100 grams of water in to make it up to 200 and dilute it. Give it a swirl to max. It's worth noting that the ISI one seems to be cloudier than the other two. I don't know if that's because of the nitrogen, if it's gonna if the cloudiness is gonna disappear or not, but we'll try this and see. That's close to that now. It's not quite that, like traditional at the moment is still way out in front. But that is close to that. I'm, I'm really surprised about that because it only took two hours, whereas this was 18 or thereabouts. So for a quick substitute, I'd, if I was needing cold brew in a hurry, I would definitely use the ISI again. And the fact that it's a concentrate, I only need to use half the amount. It's kind of winning so far. I suspect another 50 grams of water in this. Take up to a one to like one and a half ratio. Give it a swirl. And yeah. That's that's spot on. Still, still not quite there, but I think if I was drinking this without having drunk that first, I would be very happy with that. I, I can only tell the subtle differences because I've just drunk that. But yeah, very, very passable. So I'll dilute the sous vide and see, I'm just gonna go one to one with that again. Top up back to 100. And top up. I'm not all expecting greatness from this because you could tell that the ISI had potential, whereas this one, I just, I just don't think it's a good method to do it. So swirl that. Smell it. Still smells bitter. Hmm. On saying that. I'm very surprised. Some of the some of the sourness, some of the acidity is now coming through. 
and yeah, that's that's nearly drinkable. I'm gonna try another 50 grams, the same as the ISI, and just see what that does. So just a little bit further. Yeah, so I'm getting acidity from that one now, and yeah, it's it's pretty drinkable. Again, gold standard is a traditional method. Nothing's going to beat that, and you can drink that straight up. I'm not going to do it this because it tastes perfect as it is. But these two are interesting, and I can think of applications. Obviously, you've not always got time to spend a full day making cold brew. That is fine. The ISI uses quite a lot of coffee but it produces a concentrate, so you'll be doing this at one and a half. So that's worth factoring in. But the surprising one is a sous vide. Can't drink it straight, but somewhere between one and one and a half. And the surprising one is a sous vide. Somewhere between the ratio of one and one and a half times the amount of water to the amount of cold brew. And that just totally changes that. That's just blown me away how much that changed by diluting it. That being said, there is three applications. The sous vide and the traditional both use the same amount of coffee and water for the base mix. However, the sous vide can be diluted, so theoretically you'll get a larger yield. The ISI uses significantly more coffee per litre, nearly triple what the other two and it's producing pretty much the same dilution as the sous vide. So if you're going to make an ISI, it's probably one of the better, quicker, easier ways to do it, but you're going to use a lot more coffee. The sous vide, obviously you need to heat it, then chill it, and you need a water bath set up. It's a, I would say it's a pretty practical application. It's a bit more of a faff than the ISI, but a, a bit less, obviously a lot less time than the traditional method. So. I wouldn't discount one for the other. I'd say taste-wise, obviously, as I said, the traditional method is the best. It's always going to be the best. But there are applications for the other two. So it's not really a conclusive video, um, but I'm pretty surprised at the results. And hopefully someone will give it a try and let me know what you think. Um, yeah. That's kind of all I've got to say. Really, really impressed. And I'm, I'll be using these recipes, definitely using these recipes for when I need cold brew. So, thanks very much for watching, and please click like and subscribe.